And welcome, everybody, to Fanstream Sports, powered by DSP Media. This is the Fighting Irish Daily Blitz, and I'm your host, Rob Fiddoff, also known as RPT. You can find me on X at P Fiddoff. This is episode 106 of the Fighting Irish Daily Blitz. This will be the Duke, Re- Duke recap. But first things first, head over to our website at fanstreamsports.com for all additional podcast information. If you have an Apple device or an Android device, please feel free to download the Fanstream Sports app. And then head over to our Facebook page, like that page, additional information out there as well. Please feel free to share that with your friends and family. So this is a Duke recap. This is going to be a little bit shorter than other podcasts. I'm just coming back from vacation and I still wanted to get something out there. Just got back from Pasadena, saw the Rose Bowl. Uh, Hopefully if we keep winning, we still have a chance to go to the Rose Bowl this year in the college football playoff. But I was at the Halloween 45th anniversary convention for the 1978 movie and all the sequels that uh, followed after that so i didn't get a chance to i was coming back from the hotel from the convention i was kind of following on my phone uh midway through the first quarter i was getting texts from friends and family and it looked like notre dame was going to uh, pretty much have a dominant performance as i predicted because we do have better athletes than duke but I was, missed opportunities missed tackles uh, bad special teams with uh, missed field goals the common themes that we have seen since pretty much week one, I will say, uh, not so much missed tackles in week one, but after that week one, but in week one, we did see a missed field goal. And I always said, if the game comes down to a field goal, I'm not confident in Spencer Schrader, but Notre Dame wins a, uh, what can I say? A barn burner of a game, 21 to 14 led by Sam Hartman's uh, legendary drive, 95 yard drive uh, at the end of the game. Uh, because we were pretty much struggling offensively, especially in that second half. The offensive line was not good. Uh, we got to find a way to get back to what we were pre-Ohio State. I know Ohio State has a pretty good defense. Duke has a pretty good defense, but they're not the 85 Bears or the 2000 Ravens. There's got to be something that's missing right now. We got to go back to what we were doing, and uh, the coaching staff has to figure that out. So let's go uh, just some quick statistics here. Uh, 21 to 14, Notre Dame wins, uh, led by Sam Hartman's, uh, not just Sam Hartman, it was other people as well, but he had a fourth and 16 conversion uh, where he used his legs. And that was the thing too. He he really dove for that first down. It reminded me of John Elway in the uh, his first, uh, it would have been the 97 season, 98, uh, 98 New Year Super Bowl, when he finally got his first Super Bowl when they beat the Packers. I believe that was in San Diego. But when they were going for that, uh, I think it was a game-winning drive, and he just uh, reached out for the ball and got smacked. He looked like a like a propeller going in circles. But you could tell he wanted that really bad after so many missed opportunities. I think he was 0 for 3 in Super Bowls prior to that. And I think Sam Hartman's thinking back to the Ohio State game. Because prior to that play, he also had to extend for a first down. I don't know if it was a fourth down or a third down. And I think he's learned from that Ohio State game not to expect to get the call all the time. Um, even though... It, at times it looked like a first down sometimes it didn't in the osu game that is but he uh he made it known that he was going to get a first down for both those opportunities on duke so uh you you just know he's got a hell of a heart and he showed that too in that final drive just uh, a legendary drive that'll go down in one of the in the um in the many notre dame comebacks and great game winning games for notre dame so 21 to 14 uh, first downs were pretty much even 17 duke 16 notre dame total yards 381 for Notre Dame, 323 for Duke, but Duke was leading in that category pretty much, uh, especially in the second half, uh, until that 95-yard drive at the end. Uh, Rushing, 159 Notre Dame, 189 for Duke. You never like to see uh, the opposing team have more rushing yards, obviously, but Duke is more of a running-type team, especially with their quarterback. He's multidimensional, so that stat doesn't surprise me, but you'd still like to see that flipped. Uh, what else here? Penalties. This is this is the story of the game. Uh, like I said, when I came back from my hotel from the Halloween convention, uh, it it should have been from what I was told earlier, and then what I saw from when I got back to the hotel up until the first or halftime. I'm like, we should be up 24 to not uh, 24 to zero, and we were not. It was 10 to nothing. Yeah, 10 to zero at halftime, and then it was 13 to not, zero, and then it just the wheels kind of fell off until that last drive. But 12 penalties for 70 yards. Duke only two for 28. 
Duke, however, had two turnovers. We had zero, but we almost did have a turnover with uh, Chris Tyree fumble. Time possession, 28 minutes for Notre Dame, 32 for Duke. So if we get into the stats here, uh, Sam Harmon, not the best night, but he, he was the one that pretty much uh, took them on their show. Put them on, put the team on his shoulders for that last drive to seal the deal. 15 of 30 for 222 yards. Aldrich estimate 18 for 81 yards. And then he had the game winning touchdown after Sam had con, uh, converted that third and 16, a 30 yard touchdown, and then a touchdown earlier. So two TDs, 18 carries, 81 yards. The talented freshman Jeremiah Love, eight or five for 44. However, we need to get the backs more involved like we did prior to this game that five-headed monster as i always say because it seems like we are just constantly running aldrich way too much in this game get more involvement a uh, receiving we had three receivers out for this game Dion colsey uh, Jaden thomas and Jaden greathouse the really good freshman and even with that though we still have more talent than duke but i i think we really miss those guys however they're not the offensive line uh, the offensive line needs to block much better for Sam Hartman to get time to make some plays because he made a lot of those plays at the end of the drive with his legs, but then found Mitchell Evans for a big third down conversion. Also Rico Flores, who's still what these talented freshmen of Rico Flores, Jaden Greathouse, who did not play. And then also Jeremiah Love. I'll, I still say unless they're, they have great poker faces. They just do not show any fear right now as true freshmen, and we got to continue to use them. But Mitchell Evans, tight end, six K or six receptions for 134 yards. That's great. We're getting the tight end more involved, but your tight end should not be leading in this stat. It's the same thing with Michael Mayer last year. These receivers have got to start stepping up, especially Tobias Merriweather. And Chris Tyree only had two catches as well. Uh, what else here? Defensive side of the ball. Howard Cross was outstanding. 13 total tackles. J.D. Bertrand, 11. Uh, what else here? Uh, Xavier Watts had one interception. Field goals. Spencer Schrader continues to be very inconsistent. I said it again. It's like a pitcher that pitches 100 and whatever miles per hour but can't hit the strike zone. Oh, this guy, Kirk Herbstreit the entire game. He has this great leg. I don't care, Kirk Herbstreit. It doesn't matter unless he's accurate. He missed another field goal. He was two of three, hit all his extra points, but he's missing from under 40 yards or under, yeah, it was under 30 yards, I think for this. Yeah, it was a, a 30 yard, I think a 37 yard here he missed. And I have this philosophy right now. If we have a fourth and whatever, and it's inside the 40, whether it's at the 39 yard line or the 30 yard line, we either go for it or uh, if, if we do go for it and we don't like the defensive look, defensive look, just have uh, Sam Hartman pooch punt it. Uh, kind of what like Riley Leonard did for Duke uh, when they did not go for it at the end of the game and they just pooch punt, pooch punted it, can't talk it right now, and nailed it at the five yard line. But we still had that game winning drive. But I have no faith in uh, Spencer Schrader at this time. I'll say it again if it's fourth and whatever inside the 40, I don't care if it's at the 39 yard line or the 30 yard line. Either go for it or when you're going for it and do not like the look, pooch punt it because until we get more consistency from him or try the other kicker, who I still do not know who that is, uh, I do not have any uh, faith in him right now. Uh, so having said that, uh, this was uh, this was a, a night game on the big stage. Uh, Notre Dame did not make the plays they needed to against Ohio State the previous week. And I know this was a ugly game for us until that ending However, we found a way to win, and we couldn't do that against Ohio State. So, obviously, we're learning there, but uh, we still got to get better. We still got to get better because we got Louisville this week. They're undefeated. Uh, this will be the third, strength, third straight ranked team we have played in three weeks. Be a night game on ABC as well. Uh, so, the spot slot, spotlight is there for Notre Dame to make another statement as we have to make this run. Uh, we cannot lose uh, anymore right now. We cannot lose anymore to have a chance at the playoffs. Uh, but then one other thing I wanted to make note of, I, I still have confidence in Coach Freeman, but he is still a fairly young guy. Uh, Mike Elko on the other side of the field, who's the head coach of Duke, done a phenomenal job at Duke. I think he will be a big-time head coach within two years, if not sooner. I know that Michigan State job is going to be open at the end of this season. I think that would be a perfect fit for Michigan State to hire Coach Elko. But he's around my age, uh, so we've been around the block. I haven't coached football, but, you know, we're much older 
well, about a 10 year difference than uh, Coach Freeman, uh, who to me continues to learn on the job. A hell of a recruiter. I do think he will be a great coach or a solid coach, whatever you want to call it at some point. But I do think with him learning on the job pretty much every week, uh, that may it, that may cost us a game here and there. Uh, hopefully not too many games, but I just always uh, want to think uh, when we hired Coach Freeman in 2021, uh, I think Mc Coach Elko was still at Texas A&M as a defensive coordinator. He had coached at Notre Dame in 2017, then he left for Texas A&M, did a really good job there. But he's around my age, so about 47, 48 years old. And I just kind of wonder, had uh, they hired Coach Elko, how things would have been differently. Again, I have great respect, great confidence in Coach Freeman, but that age difference and, and experience, I think we're constantly seeing that from week to week. And as long as he learns from it, corrects those mistakes and goes forward, uh, we'll be fine, he'll be fine. But just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. That's what I really saw for this game. I can think, man, Coach Elko, he's really made this Duke team a, a solid team. Will they compete for a national team? No. But, I mean, give this guy a, a bigger type program, like a Big Ten team, or, you know, had Notre Dame hired him. Who knows what's going to happen? But we shall see. Uh, what else here? I think, though, that's about it right now. I'll have the Louisville uh, – preview pretty soon as well but i'm just kind of going over my notes here uh, i said i thought this would be a blowout i thought they'd be really uh locked in you know and maybe they were but these constant missed opportunities the penalties um and you give more faith to a duke team a well-coached disciplined duke team by coach elko give them more chances and then they're going to start capitalizing on those change or those uh on the, they're going to capitalize on those opportunities and uh, they got a, a solid quarterback in Riley Leonard, who I hope uh, I hope he's going to be okay. That looked like a nasty ankle injury. And uh, that's when uh, Sam Hartman cut off his interview to say, I got to see how he's doing. And he waited outside the tent. Just a classy, classy move, act, whatever you want to call it, uh, by Sam Hartman. Uh, he's, a, he's a great leader. I've seen more of that because I was kind of shocked with him coming from Wake Forest. Just I, I always say he's just a one-year rental for Notre Dame that he was voted captain right away but i'm really starting to see his great leadership and poise and just a solid dude let's just put it that way right there so uh thank you so much for joining me for episode 106 and as always go irish